So guys, the last three creator DLCs for Arma 3 have all been focused on the Cold War, and with the release of CSLA a few weeks ago, I've been thinking of how we can bring that theme to direct action. But here's the thing, a lot of you guys probably didn't buy CSLA, so how did we do it without requiring paid content? Well guys, this is Billy Eat Worlds again, and let's find out. All right, guys, so to kick off, like I said today, we're taking a look at the newest update for Armour 3 Direct Action, and this one is focused on the Cold War. And look, if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about right now, in a nutshell, Direct Action is an open world combined arms game mode for single or co-op multiplayer that I've been developing for about the last year or so. Now, we actually released the original DA about four months ago, and in that time, we've had almost 25,000 of you guys subscribe to it on the Steam Workshop. And not just that, but it's actually now available on Tanoa and Cam Leo Nam as well. And this update is actually gonna add it to another two more maps. So the question is, what makes DA different from other dynamic game modes, and why is that important for the Cold War theme? And well, it's because unlike most Armor 3 scenarios, this one is actually designed to reconfigure itself depending on what mods you've got loaded. Now, the ultimate goal is to make it compatible with basically every faction mod on the workshop, and already we've pretty much covered most of the popular ones like RHS and Cup. And this update is going to add support for the CSLA and Global mobilization created DLCs and some other free Cold War mods as well. Now, like I said, Direct Action Cold War doesn't actually require either of the C DLCs. And the way that we're getting around that is we're getting most of our Cold War assets from a mod called 3CB Factions. Now, you guys might have heard of 3CB before. They make probably the best British Army assets on the workshop. And 3CB Factions is pretty much at that same level of quality. The way that it works is it runs alongside and reskins RHS units, and most importantly, it adds US and Soviet forces to Armour 3 as well. And when you combine that with Firewheel's aircraft mods, well, you can build, in my opinion, probably the best Cold War factions that you can get from any mod in the workshop. Now, you might actually remember a couple of months back, we released Direct Action Vietnam. So. I didn't really want to go down that early Cold War route again with this one. So what we've aimed at in Direct Action Cold War is the late 1980s through to the fall of the Soviet Union in the early 1990s. Now, the cool thing about that time period is that it puts us in the era of the Soviet war in Afghanistan and also around the time of the Gulf War. And look, with that being said, I should point out, we didn't really want to recreate either of those conflicts exactly, but that's why, as you're seeing here, we're putting out two maps in this update, one based in Europe and one in the Middle East. Now, anyone that did actually buy CSLA, you're going to notice straight away the European map you can see here is Gabretta. So unfortunately, if you do want to play that one, you will need to own that DLC. But look, it's pretty obvious why we had to choose this one, because for DA to work, you really need a fairly big map with lots of interesting objectives to capture. Now, the good news is, though, you'll notice Gabretta is kind of along the same kind of lines of maps like Livonia and Roche, so the plan is to eventually configure them to work with DA as well. So look, if you really are keen to get in and play this kind of setting and this game mode doesn't convince you to buy CSLA, then eventually there will be maps like this available to play this mode on for free down the track. Now, on the other hand, though, the Middle Eastern map you can see in this video is a mod map called Anazay by Tempa, and this one is actually completely free. And look, in a nutshell, the best way to describe it is that it's pretty much Takistan, but a lot bigger, a lot more modern, and it's not just all desert. Now, a big reason that I picked this one is because it's not based on a real-world location, so it actually has quite a lot of really well-designed objectives all around the map in close proximity, and that makes it perfect for a game mode like Direct Action. And not just that, but the performance is really, really good as well, which makes it great if you like playing in jets and you have to bump up the view distance. 
All right, so what about the factions? And well, as you'll see in this video, because we're supporting the creator DLCs, there's a ton of factions to play as. The base factions with no paid content at all are the US Army, the US Navy SEALs, and the Soviets, and also you can use 3CB British Armed Forces as well. Now, obviously, on top of that, CSLA will add in the US Marines and Czechoslovakia, and Global Mobilization will add in East and West Germany, Poland, and Denmark. And not just that, but some of the factions will actually change camo depending on the map as well. And that's a new system that we're really hoping to roll out to the other maps eventually down the track as well. Now, speaking of the other maps, well, something I haven't mentioned just yet is that DA Cold War isn't just going to be limited to Gabretta and Anazé. We're actually eventually going to release Cold War versions of pretty much every map as long as they make sense and after we get around to testing them. Not just that, but we're also going to be releasing regular versions of Gabretta and Anazé as well. So you'll be able to play them in the 2035 or modern eras if you want. And like I said, that's all going to be coming as we get around to testing it. Hopefully in the next few days, weeks, and at the most in the next month. Now, just before we finish up, a couple of housekeeping things. Firstly, if you're a fan of Direct Action and you haven't already, please join my Discord. I'll link it down below. And there's a really good reason for that. DA is a complicated mission. So when you've got questions, which you probably will have, you can ask me or our community directly on there. Now, not just that, but you can also leave feedback on features you want to see added or let us know what you want us to work on next. And finally, we get together and play test on a pretty regular basis. So if you want to get involved with that, you'll need to be on the Discord. Also, if you're new to Direct Action, well, I'll leave a link in the description so that you can subscribe to one or all of the versions on Steam if you want to. They're all free, by the way. And once again, if you've got any questions, especially about getting set up on a dedicated server, let us know in the Discord. And look, I feel like I'm a broken record at this point, but if you want to run DA with mods, how do you figure out which mods are compatible? Well, it's all on the Discord. Make sure you're using one of the mod presets in the text channels on the left-hand side and make sure you load it on all clients and on the server exactly. And if you do that, well, you should be fine. But anyway, guys, that just about wraps it up for this video. So as always, please let me know what you think down below. And most importantly today, let me know what you think about the game mode. If you've got any suggestions at all, let me know down below. That's how we know how to improve it for the future. As always, though, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the links on screen now and in the description if you want to check out any more of my videos. And also, don't forget you can find my Twitter and Discord links down below as well if you want to keep in touch. And until next time, see you later, and have a good one.